Income tax 2022-2023, child tax credit and other dependent credit, tax software example. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. We are in our example form 1040 populated with Lacert tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to the form 1040 related forms and schedules at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Starting point, single filer, Mr. Anderson, living in Beverly Hills, 90210, W-2 income, 100,000. We've got the standard deduction, 12,950, getting us to the 87,050 taxable income. Page two, calculating the tax, 14,774, withholdings, 15,000 to get us to the 226. We're mirroring that over here in our Excel worksheet. 100,000 W-2 income, 12,950 standard deduction, gets us to the taxable income, 87,050. The tax, pulling that from the software, 14,774. And then we have the payment, 15,000, getting us to that 226. Now we're gonna add a dependent. Now note that we're thinking about the child tax credit and the other dependent credit, and those are intimately tied to the dependents. So when we think about a dependent, then we're going to support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. We're gonna be thinking what benefit do we get from a dependent? The benefit, big benefit usually will be one of the other, one of the two credits, either the child tax credit if they qualify for the child tax credit and if we cannot get that then we get the other dependent credit although there could be other benefits as well for example if we have a single filer as we have here and then we have one dependent it's quite likely that it will move our filing status from single filer to head of household so from a practical standpoint what this uh, comes out to then is oftentimes when we're thinking dependents we're thinking what's going to be the impact on the dependents on the tax return. Usually it's going to be the credits, but we also could have the filing status change. And in practice, you might run into situations where there's that gray area, meaning what if someone qualifies with a joint custody situation between two parents, for example, as a dependent on two returns. You can't file both of returns and have the same dependent on two returns, or the IRS will, of course, have a problem with that. And you can think about those types of situations and plan for those types of situations uh, in some type of agreements that are going to be set up, trying to maximize hopefully the tax benefits you know, between everybody involved so that everybody can at least save money from the government and possibly then figure out what you're gonna do with it, right? Who's gonna, how are you gonna divvy that up? It would be a, a, one way you might look at it. So uh, in that situation, you, you might think, okay, what's gonna be the impact on the filing statuses? for the spouses involved, what will be the tax, tax implications of that, and what will be the tax implications of, of course, the, the credits involved, which could have a difference, for example, if someone hits the AGI limitation and starts to phase out the credit, where, where it's another, you know, because, or another spouse might not hit the AGI limitation and therefore might get a bigger benefit from the credit or something like that. All right, so let's add a dependent and start taking a look at it. Okay, so from the data input screen, we're just gonna add our first name, last name, date of birth, and then of course we need a social security number or some kind of identification number. We're gonna start off with the standard child here and child lived with the taxpayer uh, when applicable for the earned income credit as well as the child tax credit. For the relationship, I'm gonna put son, not child. Okay, so then we're gonna to go to the forms here. So now, of course, on the first page of the form 1040, we've got the 
child, social security number, so all the personal information, they want it right up front on the first page, says the IRS. And this one qualifies for the child tax credit because they meet the age requirements and everything, they're under 17. Remember that to be a dependent, then they have to be under uh, 19 or 24 if they're a student, but to get the child tax credit, then they have to be under 17 is the general concept. And then if we don't get the child tax credit, then they would qualify for the other dependents, which would be the idea. In this case, however, it probably pushed them up from single to head of household too, because, because a dependent is, is usually required for that. That will also change the standard deduction. So if we scroll down here, the standard deduction, if I changed the head of household, went to the 19.4, that wouldn't happen with every child, but that could be a significant change uh, for for someone switching to the to the to the head of household standard stamp status. So let's switch it over here in our worksheet. 194. That gets us to the 80,060 600. 80,600. Roll in the dyslexia. Okay, number page two. 11 855. 11 855. Let's put that here. 11 855. That's going to be that. And then we've got the credit of 2000. So if you look at the worksheet here, there's the credit calculation. We, we haven't hit the income threshold, which for a single filer is, I believe, uh, 200,000. So we're good on that. And we get the full 2,000 of the credit. So if I put that into our worksheet over here, let's say we've got uh, other credits. So I'm going to say other credits. And let's put the child tax credit. I'm just going to put here dependent one. 2000 i'm going to pull that into my worksheet so that pulls into this line item so that comes out to then if i pull back over 9855 and then 15 to get us to the 5145 5145 all right so that's our starting point let's add another one we're going to say jill anderson second child so if i pull that on over to the form then notice there's no change to the filing status now because I don't I don't go from a head of household to something else uh, at that point. So I'm going to go down here. Now I've got my two uh, dependents that are reported. Both of them are, are child tax credit qualified for. We don't have any change on the first page because the standard deduction did not change. If I go to page number two, the tax is now 11855 but... I've got the 4,000 doubling the child tax credit for the two kids that now qualify for the child tax credit. So if I was to mirror that over here, I got my other credits, let's say dependent, dependent number two, number two, and then I'm gonna say 2,000, comes up to 4,000, pulling that over to the page one in our formula, there it is, seven, eight, five, five, 15,000 gets us to the seven, one four five seven one four five okay now let's imagine that that they're over night they're over 19 they're over the 17 threshold for qualifying for a qualifying child and to be a dependent they're over the threshold possibly there too but we're saying they're a student age 19 to 23 so they still qualify as a dependent that being that 19 threshold up to 24 under 24 but they're not under the 17 number threshold to qualify for the child tax credit. So they're still a qualifying child in terms of being a dependent, but they're not qualifying for the child tax credit. So if I pull back on over then, I went back to one dependent now. So we're still at head of household standards, one dependent, but even though they are a qualifying child to be a dependent, they're not qualified for the child tax credit because they're over the age threshold to be under 17 and therefore we're in the other credit for other dependents. Now this one person still may push us over to, to be able to claim a head of household status possibly, but we're focused here on page number two where we have a big decrease now. Now we have the other dependent credit which is only 500 versus the 2000. So if I mirrored that over here in our worksheet We've got the other credits. So this is, I should have put these up top. This is the other dependent credit, child tax credit. Let's put 500 here. And this should be total 
other dependent credit. It's gonna be pulling back on over to the first page. So now we've got the 500. And if I go back on and take a look at this, at this again, that gets us to the 11, 355, and the bottom line of the 3,645. So there's that one. Okay, let's go back to the original scenario here. But now let's say that the income is gonna is gonna go up, right? So we hit the income threshold. So how high does that income have to be for single? I believe two hundred thousand. So let's just test it out. If I get to let's let's say two hundred and twenty thousand, and I go back on over here, then we have the child tax credit. But then on page two, it's been limited. So you have the phase out that's kicking in now. We only got 1,000 instead of the 2,000. Now you probably don't need to memorize the worksheet on, on you know how they got to the calculation of 1,000 versus 2,000. You basically need to understand because the tax software will help you with that. So you can double check it here, but you basically want to be able to say, okay, I, I uh, understand the normal threshold and then what the, what the phase out when it will start uh, to phase out due to the income threshold being over 200,000 in this case. Now, if, if I change the income to just 200,000, you'll note we're still taking, we're still good for the full 2000 amount. So over that amount, it starts to phase out. Now let's go back to, let's go back here and let's put it up to like 200, 250,000. And if I go back on over, you could see then on page number two, it has been removed in essence. But if I change the filing status to married filing joint now, so if I go back on over here and say now they're married and then back on over. So now we have married filing joint and that's going to change our thresholds because now you have two people, you would think it would be doubled. So you're back up to the 2000. So when does it phase out if you're married? It'd have to go all the way up to like 4,000, you would think, right? So if it was if it was 400, 400,000, not 4,000, 400,000, you're still good. But if you go beyond that 420,000, then you've got the phase out kicking in. So that's the general idea for the for the upper thresholds, pretty high upper thresholds, although, you know, higher income individuals will hit that. Okay, now let's go to the lower income side of things, back to head of household, and say say now we've got our one dependent, but we only earned twenty thousand. So if we earn twenty thousand, then after the standard deduction, our taxable income is only six hundred dollars, and then if I calculate my tax, it's only sixty one dollars. So we only owe sixty. We would only owe sixty one dollars in that case. So you would think if it was an income tax then the only credit you would get is up to $61, even though it would normally be $2,000 because you don't owe any tax in the first place. But, and so you can see it kind of capped it right here in our worksheet. But that's where the additional child tax credit kicks in down here. Now, we also have the, the kind of messing things up with the earned income credit and the child tax credit. Those are the two big refundable component credits that could basically kick in here. So let's jump on over. This one's more complex. So let's look at the schedule 8812. So child tax credit, child tax credit or credit for other dependents, enter the amount on line 11 of form 1040. There's your AGI income. And so then we've got the, the 20,000. There's the 2,000. That would be the amount that you would normally get. You would think I'm not gonna go through it completely line by line here. Here's the upper income thresholds, 200,000 or 400,000 single married uh, filing joint and then we're limited here enter the amount from credit limit worksheet so here's your worksheet 61 right there and then on page number two we've got the calculation that gives us the 1500 which is going to be uh i won't go through it line by line here but the general idea is this, this is the additional child tax credit for all filers. In other words, it's the refundable part of the child tax credit if your income liability goes below zero. And the bottom line is you can see the refundable portion is limited to 1,500. 
So you can see up here, you, you actually got 61 of a credit plus the 1,500. So if I increased my income like a little bit, let's make it to, to uh, 25,000. So now we actually had a little bit more tax, $500 of tax, and it wiped out the tax at the 563. And now we've got the 1,437 for uh, the additional amount here. And it's a little bit complicated because again, these two have a little bit of interplay that earned income credit being the other big refundable credit, which we'll focus in on in future presentations. The point I'm trying to make is you would think that these two would add up to that, that limit of 1,500, but it doesn't, right? Because the 1,500 additional child tax credit limit minus this 1,437, you would think that would be this number, right? So we're still getting you know, over the 1,500 additional child tax credit because we're getting this amount that takes the tax down to zero up top, the normal child tax credit, and then the additional child tax credit at the 1,437. Now, of course, if they're, they're not a child at all, but they, but they qualify as an other dependent, then we wouldn't get the child tax credit. So let's go back to the original, the original scenario. So now we've got this individual is going to qualify for an, for an other dependents. So the question is, are they a qualifying child for purposes of being a dependent? If so, then the added level, do they qualify for the bigger credit, the child tax credit? If not, they would be a qualifying child that would give you the other dependent credit. If they're not a qualifying child, are they a qualifying just relative? Which, which then would, of course, the only thing you'd be going for at that point is the $500 credit, uh, the other dependent credit as opposed to the child tax credit.